want to, uh, first of all, people call in 249-5800 because that's what really stimulates this, this conversation is when you call in and give us what you think. But I'm going to tell you what I think. And, and one of the things you do for me is because I get, there's points where I get, I don't want to say depressed, but, uh, or melancholy, but maybe it is. It just, I lose hope sometimes about our society and our ability to do the right things and you know you have a you have a pretty fresh uh, I think uh, way of looking at things you haven't lost hope and you said something to me today that you just want to be able to do the things that are right without doing the wrong things without doing things that hurt others you want to make it right without hurting others I think that's a pretty lofty goal but I think that's something that we have to talk about, all of us, in our own lives, as rather than looking to find the right people to lead us the right way, we have to be able to look inside of ourselves and make sure that we've dropped all of our uh, walls so that we can do that as well. Is that fair enough? Yeah. I, it's important to me to be part of the solution rather than to be part of the problem. I, and I see it as either we have to choose which side we're going to be on. The uh, I'm a devout um, believer in the gospel of Christ, just as a foundational uh, frame of reference. But my understanding of the gospel of Christ is a little bit different than what has been my experience in Christianity. When I, when I talk about the gospel of Christ, I'm talking about the fact that what Christ said is that we're children of God. And that the things that he was able to do, he said that we could do also. He also went on to say that each one of us is, is a, as a child of God, we've been given certain gifts, talents, abilities, and every one of us is completely unique. You know, He also talked about if we have this endowment from our from our Father who's the Creator, then there's really nothing that we can't do within ourselves. And if we came together collectively as individuals, as opposed to individuals getting absorbed into the collective, I think that we'd see a, a real difference in the leadership in this country. I think that communism or totalitarianism or fascism, whatever, whatever label we want to put on that, is the, is the antithesis of what Christ was teaching. So what we're experiencing in the world today, what we're experiencing in America today, even you know, Christianity, politics, economics, has nothing to do with the gospel of Christ. It's just the opposite. And I think that ultimately, if we want to really be part of the solution, we need to understand who we are in the context of who our Father is, in the context of uh, what the world is and uh, what this planet is. And uh, if we could come into that individually, then we wouldn't need anyone to lead us because we'd all be the leaders that we're called to be. You uh, were telling me off the air this morning about a, a film you just watched, you and your wife, Nixon and Frost, and uh, I found that when I watched that film, I don't know, it's been a couple years ago or so, I'm not sure, but uh, it was kind of a melancholy film for me just because I remember those times and, and it... it it was some. It was some bad times as well. But you mentioned something that Nixon did that we wish that uh, a lot of our leaders or all of our leaders would be able to do. Yeah, the at the uh, David Frost, of course, was interviewing Nixon about his years, and at the in the last interview, Frost uh, was able to ask just the right combinations of questions to get Nixon to the place of real candor, where he dropped his guard, he dropped his ego. And he finally, for the first time, came from a place of just real spirit. And he spoke the truth. And he acknowledged that he had um, been, been involved in a cover-up. And up until that point, the, you know, during the movie, it was all about Nixon's ego. And it was all about him um, being right and looking good. And, th and then finally, there was this moment where Nixon finally just reached the place of just r being real. And I got to tell you, I felt almost bad for the guy because he finally just confessed that he screwed up yeah. and you know we don't live in a world that is very f forgiving and and so these politicians and uh, people for the most part are afraid to let their guard down and just be real because I, I think that there's a there's a point of there's a fear 
of vulnerability that if we go there that somebody might not like me. You know, there's a scripture, Jesus, I don't know if it was him that said that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Well, you know, I, I, I look at that as, you know, there's, there's the truth and then there's the error. And we all live in error until we come into the truth. And so, yeah, we all sin because that's what error is. Error is ultimately missing the mark. So it's not this bad, wicked, evil, awful thing that we do. It's just, it's just our nature. But, you know, we get into... Uh, we get into the mode of defending ourselves all the time or being afraid that we might be uh, exposed and so we you know we go into defensive mode and then want to control and now we have an entire world based upon control because we're all walking in fear so fear leads to control which leads to the governments that we're living under we're in some uh, obviously interesting political times but we're in some times for uh, conservatives that uh, are finally realizing that uh, what we have considered as a conservative party isn't truly a conservative party, which is a little bit scary in one sense is the fact that it's, it's a divided situation where liberals, really, if you look at what uh, President Obama is sitting on right now, there's a good chance that uh, President Obama could win this next election just because the conservative slash, or Republican slash conservatives can't come together and put something together. It's a real problem. Well, it's a, it's a problem in that, you know, what is conservatism? You know, it, it, it's, I've spent most of my life trying to figure this out, you know, you know trying to explain to my boys what is, conser what is conservatism? Is it, a, is it these guys choose what the doctrine of the conservative party is, and if you don't buy into it, you're not conservative? Ron Paul comes along and, and represents himself as a conservative, and yet he's completely ousted from the, the mainstream conservative because he has, a, he has an ultra-right conservatism. Well, now, we're, now we're measuring conservatism relative to what? You know, true, if, you know, true conservative, here, let me just give you my opinion of what true conservatism is, just, to, just to, as a frame of reference. You know, I read the Declaration of Independence. I like the document. There's a really great philosophy going on there. From that place, the, the, the people wrote constitutions which created states. Uh, the, ultimately, there was this, uh, a federalist government that was established in a limited sense. And um, we're supposed to be experiencing limited government and ultimate freedom of the people. This is true conservatism. But for some reason, even amongst conservatives, if you go down that road, it appears radical. Well, who? Okay, so what's the new standard of, of true conservatism? I think if we don't start at the foundation, then we're just um, assimilated into a, an indoctrination and a mindset that is, that is postmodern or is, is up to date. You know, true conservatism, I think, is looking at the principles of the foundation. And again, I keep going back to the gospel and back to the Declaration of Independence as the, not the Constitution, but the Declaration as the foundations of true conservatism. And if as, to, the, to whatever degree we move away from that point, we're no longer conservative. And uh, so um, there's a difference between conservatism and uh, what being a Republican is, I think, today. Yeah, and uh, we've looked at, uh, you take this line and you draw it right in the middle where you have the right and the left. You've got a party that's supposed to be a conservative party that's left of center right now, and you've got people that are that believe in true conservatism, and they're viewed as to be radical, and they're sitting they're sitting right where they should be sitting. You know, it's interesting. I've met liberals that I've gotten along with greatly because they they too believe in the in the foundations of America, and I see it more as instead of a left and right thing, I see it as a no government on one side and total government on the other side. So I see it more as a, not a left-right thing, but a, you know, on a scale of one to ten, zero being no government, ten being total government. We need to find a balance in there between the two. And um, ultimately, the the idea of, of fascism and communism that all really is about total government control. And true true liberty and true freedom is is about. Uh, finding the balance between just the right amount of government and just the right amount of freedom to where we enjoy life as opposed to 
uh, watching Monday Night Wrestling between two Democratic and a Republican Party that just put on the facade and, and placate the people's imagination.